Thank you, Victoria and DTR for organizing this webinar. And thank you to Tekan's team, particularly Lucia and Remy for this collaboration. I'm glad to join Lucia today and talk about our collaborative efforts towards automating Discover Access cell-based assays. Bringing automation to our cell-based assays, we are aiming to increase asset throughput, reduce assay variability, and operational cost. And last but not the least, consistent uh, method execution and asset transfer between multiple sites. All these are essential for potency assays that are implemented in quality control programs. Now, before we start, allow me to briefly introduce myself. I'm Gaurav Agrawal. I'm the Scientific Development Manager at Eurofins Discover X. I have a background in GPCRs and studied intercellular trafficking pathways at University of California in San Diego. I have joined DiscoverX a little over five years ago. Here I'm in a global role and support scientific integration of our cell-based assay platform in drug discovery programs at CRO and CDMO sites. So for today, we have segmented this webinar where I will introduce you to a cell-based asset platform and hand it over to Lucia to discuss the automation process and results. Now setting a quick agenda for my part, I will begin with a short introduction to our company and our asset portfolio, followed by a quick overview of our core technology. From here on, I will focus on our phase appropriate assay formats and mainly the ready to use bioassay format uh, that, our, that are our most suitable format for quality control programs, such as QC lot release testing. Uh, for this collaboration, this is the format that we have used, and all the data that you'll see throughout this presentation is generated using this bioassay format. So I have put together a bird's eye view, so to speak, highlighting Eurofins Discover Access core strengths that make us a global leader and a partner to biotech and pharma industry. Uh, here, our asset platform uh, are accelerating their drug discovery programs for screening, profiling, to potency lot release testing of their drug candidates for market release. Eurofins Discover X is the products brand of Eurofins Discovery. We develop and manufacture our asset products at three R&D and manufacturing centers of excellence in San Francisco Bay Area in California, St. Louis in Missouri, and Portier in France. We are enabling the discovery and development programs for the past 20 years and come with a deep experience in engineering novel MOA reflective functional cell-based assays. We have the industry's largest menu of cell-based assays covering 10 plus major target classes in phase appropriate fit for purpose formats, uh, such as qualified ready to use bioassays, stable cell lines and optimized assay reagents. But most importantly, we have established very successful partnerships and are leading the industry in supporting biotech and pharma for their drug development, characterization, and QC lot release testing programs. We closely work with their affiliated CROs and CDMO sites, ensuring successful method transfer and assay implementation in a timely manner. Before moving forward, let me first briefly introduce our enzyme fragment complementation or EFC, which is our core technology behind these assays. Our assays utilizes this proprietary technology, which is based on split beta gal system, where the enzyme is split into two inactive fragments called the ED or the enzyme donor and the EA or the enzyme acceptor. When these fragments are put together, they complement each other to form a functional beta gal enzyme. We add chemiluminescent substrate in the assay that this active uh, functional enzyme hydrolyzes to produce a light signal that can be read with any benchtop luminometer found in most labs. Our assays have distinct advantage, uh, advantages, mainly they are homogeneous and has a simple protocol and doesn't require washing shaking or centrifugation or filtration steps. And in addition, they produce robust assays with large signal to background ratios uh, that yields a very high assay precision. In addition, simple protocol makes it easier to transfer these assays between multiple sites without steep learning curves uh, for operators. 
And now bringing in automation, uh, we are aiming to increase asset throughput, reduce asset variability, and operational costs. Let me quickly show you how we use EFT technology with an example of one of our widely adopted dimerization asset format. Reciprocal dimerization is, an, uh, is the mechanism of action or MOA for different targets such as receptor tyrosine kinases and also for interleukin receptors. Now we begin with uh, expressing the receptor units tagged with these inactive PTAGAL fragments in a cell background um, such as uh, HEC293 cells, CHO cells, uh, U2OS, etc. In absence of any stimulus, there is no operant activity that you'll record and whatever uh, activity you will see will correspond to the basal constitutive activity of the receptor only. Now, when the ligand is added to the cells, the receptor dimeration event happens, also bringing together the two otherwise inactive beta-gal fragments to form an active enzyme. This followed by addition of a detection reagent and recording chemiluminescent signal, the assay produces a quantitative response that is easy to analyze and interpret in the uh, using uh, uh, typical softwares. So this is how we devise functional MOA reflective assays using the EFC technology. Utilizing this enzyme fragment complementation technology, we have built, in fact, the largest menu of cell-based assay portfolio in the industry with over 800 functional cell lines in 40 plus cell backgrounds. And with that, hundreds of assay ready kits and membrane preps. Our portfolio sufficiently covers all major druggable target classes such as GBCRs, receptor and cytosolic tyrosine kinases, interleukins, checkpoint modulators, as well as reporter assays for key regulators of signaling pathway, and also assays for ADCC, ADCP, and other cytotoxicity applications. We really pay attention that our assays are reflective of the mechanism of action of the target, and the biology remains close to its function in vivo. A good example of that are our co-culture assays, where the target receptor and its corresponding ligand are expressed on different cell types. Now these cells are sequentially added to the assay to mimic the signaling axis in vivo. Our SERP alpha and PD-1 assays are among these and are highly regarded in the drug release space for biosimilar drugs for therapeutics like Keytruda. Also for some of the targets you see here, we are the first to market and still the only provider. Credit goes to our assay development team and their proactive efforts investigating hot targets. In the last year, we have also helped accelerate drug development programs for therapeutics for COVID-19. Cytokine storm, a disproportionate hyper-release of cytokines in COVID-19 patients has been a major area of focus for developing or redirecting therapeutics. We have cell-based assays for every single cytokine that has been implicated in COVID-19 uh, in our portfolio. In parallel, we have been building ready to use bioassay formats for major targets and are qualifying them with clinically relevant drugs. So they are they come pre-validated, de-risking their implementation in drug release programs. And, like, and likewise, we have successfully utilized EFC for many assay formats, such as uh, some of them are listed here to quantitate protein-protein interactions, protein turnover and degradation, for evaluating downstream response, and more recently, for developing cytotoxicity assays, such as ADCC and ADCP. In addition to functional assays, we have also generated cellular target engagement assays using AFC. Here, our clients use these assays to not only interrogate cellular target engagement, but also cell permeability for their test compounds. But given the flexibility of this technology, we are constantly developing new assays to address the growing scientific needs of the industry. Now it is also important to make our assays available in phase appropriate assay formats. Here are the two key formats we have developed that cater to program needs. The primary is of course the stable cell lines offering a continuous culture format. 
But more importantly, we went a step forward and have derived a ready-to-use format from these stable cell lines that essentially do not require any cell culture. We put immense amount of time and effort to optimize this format and consider it most appropriate for late stage drug discovery phase, mainly for potency and stability testing and quality control lot release programs. We have taken for another step forward and qualified some of these bioassays with clinically relevant marketed drugs uh, where available. So before I go forward with the bioassay, let me quickly highlight our process for developing stable cell lines. The unique method that differentiates us to, from others is the way we go about creating these stable cell lines. As on the flowchart on the left, once we decide on the appropriate MOA for the target, we introduce the expression cassette using retroviral transduction and not with regular transfections. This set us apart as the retroviral transduction makes a stable genomic integration for the expression construct. And once cloned out, the cell line shows a very high degree of passage stability. In the flow data in the middle section here shows a cell surface expression of the target protein, which remains quite stable for 45 passages that we have tested here and can go on even longer. The data on the right shows functional data for this assay, where an increasing dose of the antagonistic anti-ligand antibody is tested. The assay performed stably across 45 passages that is tested here, and we see less than 20% CVs across passages. Now these data sets shows that our cell lines are really stable and give solid performance and retains a consistent cell surface expression for over 40 passages. Now, these are the stable cell lines that we use to build our ready-to-use uh, assays that I'll be going to next. When we drive a bioassay from stable cell lines that I just showed you, we don't take it lightly and consider that the procedure that we have developed for the cell line will work as is for the bioassay as well. Now, ready-to-use assays are a different assay format and need separate set of assay optimizations. At time, we have to go back to drawing board and rework the assay. The primary factor that is different for, the, for these assay formats are the cells themselves. Here we have the cells that are used in the assay right out of thaw versus cells from a continuous culture cell line where cells have a chance uh, to be actively growing in the culture before they are put into the assay plate. But I must say that we have excelled at building the assay ready, uh, assay ready formats, and here is some data to showcase our experience. The data on the left, I've compared side by side the assay performance of both the continuous culture and the ready to use format, showing a very comparable performance, both in terms of signal to background, as well as the EC50 of the assay. The graph on the right shows the depth of our experience converting over six plus cell lines to assay ready formats and the performance of an overwhelming majority of target lies closely between the cell line and the ready to use assay cells. Now this speaks to the depth of our experience when driving and optimizing an assay ready format. All right, let's dive right into our bioassay format and uh, see how they are more suitable format for quality control programs such as potency and stability testing. Also, we'll try and put things in perspective as to why it would be highly beneficial to bring automation to this asset format. Now, when it comes to bioassays, our strategy is driven by industry standards. We develop and qualify our assays in accordance to the ICH guidelines. This makes them fit for purpose for implementing in QC lot release programs. These features listed here are some of the key requirements and are essential for potency assays and often difficult to achieve and maintain. Mainly a high level of assay accuracy, precision, and reproducibility is required, not only for the assays that are performed on the same day, but on independent days, months, and years. Uh, that is for the entire life cycle of the drug. Now add to that, this consistency should remain across independent assay lots and between individual analysts. This seems like a lot, doesn't it? Now we aim to deliver 
these and our uh, these through our optimized qualified pre-validated assays but this is where bringing automation can really help as the check mark shows here automation can help with attaining consistent assay and can dramatically reduce the pressure from assay analysis to produce precise and accurate results and reduce errors by streamlining the assay workflow and not only these but automation can also add additional value to the program and allow increasing assay throughput reduce uh, assay failure rates decrease operational cost and more importantly make the method execution consistent for a seamless asset transfer between multiple sites so these constitutes the main value proposition in bringing automation to a cell based assays before i move forward let me give you a very quick overview of a general assay protocol for our assays the assay protocol more or less remains quite similar across our entire assay portfolio and for this reason it can be easy to perfect and implement new assays now having an assay protocol easy also helps in automating workflows and lucia will elaborate that further in her in her part but mostly our assays start with plating cells in the assay plate usually overnight next day the molecule of interest is added and incubated for another one to three hours thereafter you will add a detection reagent with a beta gala substrate and incubate the plate in the dark for an hour to three hours and that is about it after the incubation the plate can be read in any benchtop luminometer thus the workflow doesn't require any washing shaking or centrifugation steps at all thus making the workflow automation friendly configuration wise we make sure our bioassays comes as a kit inclusive with all the necessary assay reagents now this omits the need for sourcing reagents from various different vendors and qualifying them individually with the assay also this roots out the variability introduced at any step as all the assay components are coming from one source tried and tested our bioassay kits comes with a dedicated user manual specifically drafted for an for an individual assay following this manual it will be easy to draw an automation workflow for any assay in addition the kits comes with necessary documentation mainly a lot specific certificate of analysis document showing assay performance and data for micro and sterility testing among other details we also make available assay qualification data for our qualified bioassays important to mention here we have the flexibility to accommodate special needs and region requirements to produce custom kits and accommodate any special needs for an automation workflow if the standard packaging is not meeting that showcasing some new additions to our portfolio for reference these bioassays are qualified with fda approved marketed drugs as per the ICH guidelines showing here is the dilutional linearity data right from the relative potency experiments these data sets show excellent correlation between the expected versus me versus measured relative potencies of these drugs demonstrating that the assay is sensitive accurate and precise on the left it is the adalimumab bioassay for TNF alpha that we have qualified with the FDA approved drug Humira in the middle we have the anakinra bioassay which is qualified with kindred and on the right it's a sargamastim bioassay which is qualified by lucan this these assays are off the shelf and are uh, and are ready to be implemented for biosimilar and biobetter programs globally likewise we have a large portfolio of these qualified assays for several other clinically relevant drugs One of the key attributes to our assays is their flexibility of use. Our R&D is on a constant move to proactively test various types of molecules in our assays and develop optimized assay protocols for drug candidates with different MOAs. The data sets here attest that our assays can be used to characterize several different types of molecules such as therapeutic antibodies that are targeting the receptor as well as the ligand. The assays can work robustly with plate-bound ligand 
or a soluble one or one that's presented on the cell surface. The first two data sets on the lower panel shows assays that record activity from agonistic antibodies and that the assays are dynamic enough to record how antibody cross-linking or FC gamma receptor mediated clustering can improve agonistic responses. And the lower right panel shows a potent inhibition brought by small molecule inhibitors uh, to downstream signaling events for a checkpoint assay. And all these data sets presents all the different ways our assays can be utilized to characterize a wide array of drug candidates with different MOAs. Here is where all our assays come to fruition with so many global programs, making us one of the largest industry adopted asset portfolio provider. Here is a glimpse of some of the successful assays that are implemented in potency, stability, and NAP testing programs for releasing the drug candidates into the market and also for post-release monitoring across the globe. At Eurofins DiscoverX, we are highly committed to providing end-to-end -end support to such biologics development programs and ensure successful implementation of our fit for purpose qualified bioassays for validation at GLP GMP sites. To bring all that we discussed into a unified perspective, the primary reason for a wide adoption of our qualified bioassay format is evident when we look at this typical roadmap for developing a fit for purpose bioassay for a biologic drug candidate. Now here you see it is needed for market release and clinical use of the drug candidate. It can take upwards of 12 to 18 months if starting from cell line development, subsequent qualification, and then implementation for QC lot release testing. Here is where our qualified pre-validated biases can really help in shrinking this long time frame by more than nine months. When implementing our qualified bioassays for a drug candidate, you will bypass a number of milestones and can be looking at a ready to use assay that can be directly transferred to a GMP site for assay validation work. This is where we believe assay automation can play a big role in further shrinking these timelines and can help save significant costs and resources. So most of today, I talked more about our cell lines and bioassays uh, and their qualification and implementation. But on this last slide, I want to leave you with more comprehensive overview of our assay formats that I didn't discuss today. Here's a typical drug, develop, uh, drug discovery uh, and development pipeline on the upper panel. And corresponding to that, I have listed our other product formats that are fit for purpose for specific phases. Now, such as membrane preps for binding studies, purifying enzymes for biochemical assays and toolbox products that we have that enable you to create your own assays in your own labs. And last but not the least, our custom assay service where you can have us develop an assay for you for a new target that we may not have on our portfolio and transfer it to your site. So I hope this is a useful overview of Discover Access capabilities and we look forward to partnering with you and help accelerate your drug discovery and release programs. I will now ha uh, hand it over to Lucia. Thank you everyone for your time. Lucia, take it away. Hello everybody. Thank you for the introduction and thank you Gaurav for the very clear presentation so far. I'm very happy to be here today to give you an overview of TCAN solutions and how these can be leveraged to automate functional cell-based assays. I will start by going through TCAN automation solutions for the cell culture and cell-based assay workflows before we move on to the validation of DiscoverX CNR1 bioassay on TCAN's Fluent Automation Workstation. I will show you uh, results that were obtained on the Fluent, so automated data, as well as manual data that was obtained by a DiscoverX uh, QC scientist. And finally, I will highlight the conclusions from this collaborative work, and then we will open the floor for the Q&A session. So let's start with TCAN solutions for the cell culture and cell-based assay workflows. The picture in the center shows 
TCAN's latest liquid handling platform called Fluent, which can help increase productivity, assay reproducibility, as we will see later on, and release the lab staff from doing repetitive and tedious tasks. It's possible to add a vertical laminar flow HEPA hood on top of the Fluent to ensure that you're working in a sterile environment and prevent cell culture contamination. As you know, environmental control is also crucial when handling cells, and the seamless integration of an automated incubator allows to keep cells in a healthy environment by maintaining temperature, gas levels, and relative humidity stable throughout the incubation periods. So this way you can achieve optimal cell viability and minimize assay variation. In addition to our liquid handling platforms, we offer our multi-mode readers that can be used for cytometry applications, such as monitoring of cellular growth and health. The Spark Cyto is TCAN's latest multi-mode reader that combines standard detection modes with live cell imaging to enable multiplexed analysis and get the most amount of data out of your experiments. The Fluent workstation can be equipped with two to three arms, depending on the size of the liquid handling platform. In this case, we show a Fluent 780, which is the medium-sized instrument, equipped with a flexible ch channel arm that we also call FCA, and a robotic gripper arm, also known as RGA. With Fluent's finger exchange system, it's very easy to change the grippers on the fly, allowing to handle either tubes or microplates, and we will see an example of this in the next slide. The FCA can perform routine cell culture steps, like cell seeding, as well as medium exchange and cell harvesting. The other arm that can be used to handle this type of cell culture steps is the multiple channel arm, or MCA, which I will also show in one of my next slides. And finally, we aim to empower our customers by providing integration of many different third-party devices, such as centrifuges, incubators, cell imaging systems, etc. And it is through TCAN Labworks that we provide these custom-made solutions in order to automate the complete workflow. So what you can see here is, this, is the Fluent in action. The RGA, which is the arm on the right, can easily exchange fingers on the fly. In this case, it starts with fingers to handle tubes and will later change to eccentric fingers to manipulate microplates. You can also see a barcode reader on the deck as well as balance to weight compounds. And the FCA, which is the arm on the left, can quickly fetch tips to aspirate medium from tubes, troughs, or plates, and dispense the liquid in the destination labware of choice. So right now it's aspirating liquid from the tubes and will later dispense it in the, in the microplate. The MCA, which is the arm in the middle, can pipe at 96 or 384 wells in parallel, depending on the head adapter that is being used. And now you can see how it's aspirating the reagent from the trough and dispensing it at the same time in all 96 wells before dropping the tips. The RGA can also change to centric fingers, uh, as it is the case in this video, because there is in this particular example, a centrifuge that was integrated below the deck. So you can see how the RGA can access uh, below the work table to place the, the microplate inside the centrifuge. So you can truly benefit from the entire vertic vertical footprint of the fluent. To give you a bit more detail, the flexible channel arm offers eight independent pip pipetting channels with automatic span adjustment to access multiple plates across the work deck. In the first video, uh, you can see how easy it is to perform serial dilutions with the FCA and even introduce mixing steps to ensure a homogeneous solution. So you can see how the, the tips are aspirating and dispensed and mixing the solution. In the second video, you can see the multiple channel arm mixing cells 
before seating them in a 96 well plate. And this arm can pipette up to 500 microliters in 96 wells in parallel or 125 microliters in 384 wells at the same time. Again, depending on the head adapter that is being used. We do have several application notes available on our website, which I encourage you to, to have a look at. And these clearly show how our liquid handling platforms can help streamline the, help, the cell culture, sorry, and cell-based assay workflows and relieve staff from time consuming and repetitive tasks. So now that I showed you the hardware, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Fluent Control software, which provides flexibility and ease of use to the operator. Fluent comes with touch tools, that is an intuitive and customizable user interface. You can define assay specific instructions and guide the user throughout the protocol or add a picture of the work table to make sure that all the reagents and the labware that are needed are available on the deck. This video shows Fluent 3D Simulator, and as you can see, it allows the user to program and verify that commands are running as expected without the need of being next to the instrument or even using limited reagents. It also enables to estimate the timing of actual runs, which can come in handy when planning experiments in the lab. Fluent Control is very easy to use thanks to the drag and drop commands that I will show you in the next slides. And it offers many ready-to-use liquid classes. So this makes it easy to get started. And it's also possible to personalize them and make liquid handling adjustments as required. Last but not least, TCAN also offers Fluent GX Assurance software to support regulated environments with user management tools, audit trail for data traceability and integrity in order to stay compliant. With this slide, I wanted to show you how easy it is to structure and, and translate a protocol into a fluent control script with a drag and drop commands. This is just a snippet of the template script for the CNR1 assay, and it includes liquid classes used for resuspension of cells, as well as preparation of the agonist, agonist serial dilution. So there is truly no need to reinvent the wheel here. If we open one of these groups, you can see the commands where it clearly states the action that the selected arm will follow. In this case, it is the FCA, and you can see the commands to get tips, aspirate, dispense, and drop tips back. It's even possible to turn off the light of the instrument if you're running a light-sensitive step of the protocol, so it truly gives a lot of flexibility to the user. So now let's focus on DiscoverX CNR1 assay. The principle of this assay follows the enzyme fragment complementation technology that Korav explained a few slides ago. The GPCR is activated upon binding of the agonist, which results in beta resting recruitment and the formation of a functional beta gal enzyme capable of hydrolyzing the detection reagent and generate a chemiluminescent signal. This signal can then be measured and quantified to obtain a dose response curve, as shown in the graph um, on the right. This type of assay serves as a direct way to measure receptor activity, and it is widely used for QC lot release and drug potency testing. The protocol itself is pretty straightforward, and it basically follows three main steps. First, there is the thawing of the cryopreserved cells which will be seeded in a 96 well plate and incubated for 48 hours. Then there's the preparation of the agony serial dilutions and treatment of the cells. And finally, the addition of the detection reagents before measuring the chemiluminescent signal with a reader or a standard luminometer. The automated steps of the protocols of the protocol are shown in blue. And the fluent was used for the liquid handling steps, while the Spark MMR was used for quantifying the chemiluminescent signal. So now that we have covered the principle and the protocol of the assay, I will share with you the data that was obtained after running four independent experiments 
on the fluent across different days. Each experiment was run in triplicates following the instructions of the CNR1 assay user manual. And these, uh, these graphs show the dose response curves obtained for day one, day two, day three, and day four. On the y-axis, you see the relative luminescence units, and on the x-axis, the increasing molar concentration of the agonist. Below the graphs, we show the EC50 result, which is the concentration that gives half maximal response, as well as the signal to background ratio. As you can see, both values are in close range across the different days, showing high reproducibility and proving that the assay is running robustly out of the box on the Fluent platform. We then looked into more detail at the interday assay precision achieved with the Fluent and we plotted each replicate curve on the figure on the left. As you can see, the relative standard deviation, also known as coefficient of variation, for the EC50s across all replicates from four independent experiments was 13.5%. Overall, this data shows that the replicates are very tight and that the assay is reproducible by delivering consistent results across experiments conducted on multiple days. This sort of assay reproducibility and repeatability is critical for drug characterization and QC release programs such as drug lot release for potency and stability testing. Similarly, we looked into intraday replicate consistency. On this slide, we have analyzed the raw luminescence data from the experiment performed on day two and calculated the relative standard deviation. As shown, the replicates for each data point are extremely tight and the average RSD is 3.3%, which demonstrates high intraday replicate consistency. We then compared the interday replicate consistency and we summarized the CV obtained for each of the four independent experiments. For each day, the average CV is less than 5%, and this illustrates that the Fluent system provided low day-to-day -day variability for this given assay. So I know this is a busy slide, but what I want you to focus on is the consistency of the Spark Reader recording luminescence across multiple days for the four independent experiments. Here you see a very high consistency in the luminescence readout with an average CV of less than 10%. As you may know, this is usually not the case since luminescence recording can vary from day to day. So having this sort of consistency can truly help labs in the quality control space to align, the, to align their data in a much better way. And to put things in perspective, a QC scientist from DiscoverX with extensive experience with this type of assays has run several experiments manually in order to compare the results with the data obtained using the Fluent. And as you can see, the replicate data is very tight and looks very much in line with, with what was produced with the Fluent. So this shows how good out-of-the-box automation for this ready-to-use kit truly is with the automation workstation, as it really came very close to what a highly experienced QC scientist could achieve. With my second to last slide, I want to show you the interday assay precision analysis for the manual experiments. As you can observe, the manual data looks super consistent and reproducible. Still, if you note the intermediate precision obtained for a manually performed data set, it's 17.5%, which is slightly higher than what was obtained by using the Fluent system, which was 13.5%. The key message here is that the Fluent system is capable of generating a tight data set right out of the box without further optimization. And also that the automated data is comparable to the one generated by an, by an experienced QC scientist and still provide slightly higher precision. With this, I'd like to conclude. I've shown you and hopefully convinced you that the CNR1 bioassay is working out of the box 
and performing robustly on the Fluent, that comparable data sets were obtained both manually and automated with easy 50s within close range and similar signal to background ratios. We have also proved the Fluent can achieve high precision and repeatability through low replicate variability across intraday and interday experiments. Moreover, the assay format is ideal for automation and it is representative of many other kits available. And finally, it's important to keep in mind that it's possible to automate the entire workflow by integrating third-party devices through TIC and LabWorks team. So now I've reached the end of my presentation and I would like to thank you all for your attention. I'm happy to take any questions you may have. <laughs>